Um, welcome everyone to our final talk and panel event as part of the Western Arts and Health Festival 2022. Um, the festival continues until Sunday with a whole range of brilliant free events and creative tasters, music, drama, theatre, um, film screenings and food. So um, come to everything that's left, it's going to be amazing. Um, this event is, we're really excited about, it is Roots into Arts and Health. Um, so we're going to be joined by students and their course leaders who the students have joined us on placement at UHBW, so it's University Hospitals, Bristol and Western NHS Foundation Trust, arts and culture team, a bit of a mouthful. Um, and our team is still relatively new and it's amazing to have the support of students um, on placement with us and to all the things that they bring to our team as well. So um, first of all we're going to hear from Lara and Marianne and Lara studies MA curating at um, UE, University of West of England. Um, and Marianne is her course lead. And then afterwards we'll hear from Jo Sinclair and Amy Creech um, from the Creative Arts Therapies course at City of Bristol College. Um, so I'll begin. Um, would you like to introduce yourselves to the room? Sure, okay. Hi everyone, I'm Marianne Mulvey. I'm the programme leader, um, as Bethan said, of the Curating MA. Am I near enough the mic? Um, sorry, that. okay. <laughs> So yeah, I'm a programme leader for the Curating MA at um, University of West of England. Um, I've been in post just over a year. Um, the course has been running f since 2014 and it runs in partnership with lots of different cultural organisations um, across Bristol and the region. And the arts team um, at the hospital uh, in Bristol and covering Western as well is part of that. So we're really excited to have um, this context as part of our MA course provides quite a rich contrast to some of the other kind of art forms and cultural disciplines that we have on board. And Lara, you've been studying um, with us for almost a year, since yeah. January. Started in January and then started the placement alongside at the same time. Um, so that's been running alongside. Um, so yeah, I've got a couple of months left um, working on a final project and then bringing everything together. Um, yeah. And I wonder if you'd want to say a little bit um, for everyone here around your experience prior to coming on the MA because yeah. you did have um, some quite relevant uh, work that you'd already carried out in a kind of arts and health context. Do you want to yeah. let everyone know about that? Yeah. Um, so kind of during and then after my BA, um, my degree, I had contact with someone who was working uh, in a local health board in Cardiff. Um, who had been appointed as our Arts and Health Coordinator um, and kind of she was actually giving me some advice on my CV and some careers thing which was what she did previously and she kind of mentioned if you want to get involved there's all these projects so um, my first one was in a project that was already kind of underway with some students um, studying illustration in Cardiff who were making some murals for a staff um, kind of wellbeing room in a long-term Covid hospital um, so yeah, I kind of jumped on board with that and went through the process with an artist of kind of going to the site of meeting some of the staff and kind of figuring out how to work online as well during this like, COVID hybrid time of how we can kind of work together visually and bring those ideas um, together. I missed the end of that project as I was finishing my degree, um, but then I worked on something which was um, an artist who had made some paper cuts with messages from patients to staff. Um, each time someone brought one, she'd donate one to the hospital. Um, and yeah, I worked with some of the staff in the cancer ward at one of the hospitals to kind of figure out a display that would work um, with them hanging, um, yeah, working around some health and safety, but yeah, making that display for them there. So yeah, that was my experience in arts and health for coming on the course. Yeah. And, and would you say that that experience has, has kind of been a good way in like did it provide some context for the way in which you've been working mm -hmm. I'd also be interested to know what's been unexpected okay. as part of your mm -hmm. work in because it's a really um, quite a challenging environment sometimes yeah. I think so yeah, yeah how would you definitely I think kind of maybe the way of working um, with the different members of the team and how kind of these different threads come together I think with the team starting up is just trying to get some roots in these different places and with the staff in different areas of the arts 
which I would say was something unexpected. I was kind of maybe focused on the visual so far, mm. but really hearing, um, I met today the poet in residence, um, mm. Beth Calverley, doing all that and learning about the different workshops she's done with staff, um, some things going on with movement and dance and music, mm. musicians coming out towards and having the pianos in different places. You often hear mm. people kind of playing in the atrium or different areas around. So yeah, in terms of art form, I think that was something unexpected. Um, and I was kind of reflecting on this environment with the encounter um, with people kind of coming across these artworks, um, be it visual works or otherwise, um, that they haven't necessarily come to see. But then unexpectedly expected would be staff who have kind of got used to seeing this work in the corridors and would like, if we're there, are we getting new artworks or what's coming next? So yeah, this unexpected becoming something that is kind of, yeah, had like some routing and people like mm -hmm. yeah thinking what's coming next excited to see knowing what we do and yeah kind of maybe expecting this to be integrated in the daily life mm -hmm. and stuff. Mm -hmm. yeah. so it sounds like almost your your role within it within the arts team or within the hospital you're really embedded aren't you within the kind of life of the organization um installing work in the corridors and, and having questions from yeah. patients and staff mm -hmm. and um, what's that what's that like just to give us a flavor of a flavor of that or, yeah, or a recent project where mm, that's happened yeah um, that's been very interesting and that actually uh, feeds into something I'll touch on later about research and wayfinding but um, yeah just really being about um, and having these interactions I think um, you kind of think about the big things or the big projects but it's really these small interactions and conversations that really stick with you kind of these small differences um, yeah like doing a workshop it can be oh, people coming along but when you have that one moment with someone where it kind of yeah it makes a real difference in their day um, I was in the eye hospital was that the creativity and well-being yeah. week yeah and we had uh, one instance with a patient who would come along and um, we had all these activities, but it was actually uh, with his eyesight and what he wanted to do, just wanted to sit there and listen to the music and do something with clay, and it kind of gave some really nice feedback around that. Um, and staff who just happened to be there, and it's just, um, when you have something there, people can just get drawn in, and it's that awareness of, of there's something else going on. Mm. Yeah. Mm. That's really nice. And just um, to pick up on something that that you mentioned and that I'm really excited about with your work in particular, Lara, and through the conversations we've had. Um, the hospital and the arts programme as a site of research mm -hmm. seems to have come up quite strongly for you. Yes. Would you like to share um, your kind of latest ideas on on that yeah. with, with our group here? Yeah, so I was thinking about um, some ideas for my last research project slash essay. Um, and yeah, just right from the start, I think I've been thinking about this idea of wayfinding um, that also came from these interactions of people kind of would stop you and say, what's the way, the thing with the signage? Um, but yeah, just really got thinking about this idea of how you might find your way um, in this um, environment, what it means to get lost. And I kind of, through some personal experiences, compared that to sites of the museum or gallery and kind of questioning yeah, what it means to get lost, how you find your way through interaction with people, um, through maybe different design projects. Um, I saw Hannah Broadway, an illustrator, who did some work um, at the BRI, or the on Oncology and Hematology, um, of, um, she'd done these panels where, um, through uh, meetings with staff, had drawn up these different things, and um, really patients and staff referring to these rooms as like the cup of tea room with an illustration mm -hmm. and kind of integrating that in. Um, so yeah, I was kind of from these experiences then started looking and doing research and reading um, into some quite diverse um, studies and writings. Um, there's Tim Ingold who's done a lot about lines um, and how this relates in all different ways to life. Um, um, yeah, just seeing this experience of finding your way in a specific uh, environment is not being isolated from kind of everything else that's going on, you know? Um, and yeah, it's something I definitely like to carry forward, I think, um, specifically in the hospital context to really bring the ideas that I thought about in the museum and gallery context back into the hospital and how 
that might inform some work going on. So yeah, that's something I'd like to talk to the team about more and bring that back in um, to the work being done at the hostel. And I think for like, from my perspective, this is such a rich kind of context and it gets really exciting when I see students um, emerging a set of concerns from their context, working with that um, within the classroom and then within their tutorials and their essays, and then how that gets fed back into the environment that they're in and how that might travel across, you know, after their placement as well. Um, and I wonder, as, as someone who kind of works um, in the team and who works with different placements, is this something that um, that you enjoy as, as part of your work? And are there other examples of kind of these different fields kind of feeding into each other? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I'm one of four in the team, but I speak from personal yeah. experience. I think um, having students on placement is so totally invaluable of just bringing every person has something different inside and has a unique set of experiences and has studied different things and has different passions. So even in Lara's case, coming in and having that interest in textiles for yeah. us opened up a whole new avenue of um, something else to explore. No one in our current team had a particular focus on textiles and the NHS has such a rich history of using colours and tex textures and fabrics to express um, your role and your position and, and different um, elements of care. So um, that's one example of one of many things that each person brings to a team. And you're right, kind of when you come in and you just have that one year, which isn't long, but mm. the things that you do and you get involved with in that time, they are then the seeds that are planted to to carry on and send us in new directions and, and navigate the team, especially as our programme is so new still. Yeah. We're still at a point where we're exploring everything and everything's sort of new and bespoke and a bit of a pilot, so um, it's a really exciting time um, to have all these different voices and ideas coming in. That's, that's really nice to hear and um, I guess that kind of brings us to your final project in a way, Lara, because um, this is your... Um, last sort of three months on the course and in your placement and you're working towards something um, which you've been um, thinking a lot about with the team over the summer. Um, would you like to give us a little snippet of, of, of your kind of final curatorial project? Yeah, so I'm kind of developing an idea around working with staff um, in a series of sessions to uh, think about the hostel environment and how we feel about it, what our memories are there how we sense it, kind of looking in a new way um, through the medium of textiles and to really focus on the process of making and how this can really focus in on and be a way to share these experiences um, in a small group. So, yeah, that'll be coming up soon. Yeah, so um, anyone who's working in, in the environment who's interested, yeah. um, talk to Laura afterwards. Yeah, I'll be here. <laughs> um, and I think this it kind of ties into um, some other research that you found around sensing spaces of healthcare. Um, so I guess my last question would be, um, how how where do you think this MA placement and um, the study and the research mm. that you've been doing and the work that you've been doing in the hospital, where do you think this might take you? Um, I think this is something I'm definitely um, in the process of reflecting on kind of how I see myself going after this um, but yeah I think there's just so much happening now in arts and health in the area um, I think I'll just follow it. some of the threads that I've picked up in terms of the research there's so much that I haven't processed yet the, the ideas that have come up in the classroom and through the placement so I think yeah just really keep these things going thinking about them and I'm just very open to opportunities and seeing what happens, I think. Yeah, nothing fixed them. Yeah. Great. Do you have any questions that you'd like to pick up on or should we open it up now to, up to anyone else who might want to ask something or, or just say something, respond? We're really open. So we've got a question about um, involving patients and having a workshop format where you're working with the patients to all create together. Mm -hmm. Do you want to answer that, Laura, from your experience, and then maybe you can chip in? Um, can you start by <laughs> Yeah, sure. So I think, um, yeah, it is absolutely something which is it's a growing area for us in our team because um, during the pandemic, the team was formed not long before the pandemic, and then the, the focus um, shifted. Uh, everything, what was possible, a lot of things went online, but there were some really brilliant projects that came out of that time. Um, focusing on what you could do through print and publishing and what you could do through um, 
online and video calls, our poet in residence began to work virtually, um, being poet on call for, um, I wasn't here at this time, but it all sounds brilliant. Mm. Um, and then post, now we're sort of coming more out of that time, we're getting to a point where very recently in the past few months we've introduced um, new programmes of work in, in partnership with um, North Bristol Trust's Fresh Arts programme. Um, to do for, yeah, they're brilliant. So they've got Dance for Dementia programmes, which mm -hmm. are now coming to Western mm -hmm. Hospital. I've been to one of their talks in Bristol, very mm -hmm. interesting. Yeah, yeah. And, and they work with Parkinson's people yeah. as well. Yeah, so it's the original spinners of the group who, That's right. who run it, and they're absolutely yeah. Rem remarkable, yeah. And now, so Dance for Dementia has come to HBW, and musicians on wards are now coming in, and we're going to soon be introducing um, a musician in residence as well. So there's much more patient-focused activities going on. Um, most recently in Dementia and Delirium Action Week, um, we gathered... Were you around for this, Joe? Yeah. So joe has been actually much more on the participation side of things through her placement, so you're going to hear much more about this, but um, in Dementia and Delirium Action Week, we did some ward-based group um, creative activities around weaving and bunting printing and, um, and also having musicians come and play. So. Yeah, but actually there's going to be much more about that in Joe's talk, so I'll save yeah. some. Yeah. 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 Has that impacted the other students in the way that they think about the purpose of art, the purpose of public mm. art, the purpose of art in public space? I, that's such a nice question and I think we should both answer that because you have your student body cohort, you're yeah. part of that. Yes, um, I think it's um, one of the real strengths of the course is that each student works in such a different context and we really come together around our audiences, really. How do we orientate our practice as curators in whatever setting we're in towards our, our audience? And I think, for me, the hospital environment is really really interesting and exciting even just in terms of what you're talking about wayfinding the signage um, the amount of information there is and it's such a busy space so finding a movement within that as a curator to kind of operate and to do something um, and also the different audiences you're thinking about these incidental um, uh, audiences that may only walk past um, an exhibition that you have up once or twice, people who are coming back and back and back um, in different kinds of states of um, different kinds of states of health and um, working with the staff. I think it's such a rich context. Um, I hope that through the work that um, the students are doing where they present their work and they talk about um, more informally with each other, we create reflective spaces within the classroom to kind of allow everyone to hear from each other. Um, I hope there's a rich crossover, but I would, I'd, I'd ask you, Lara, mm. what you think. Do you think the students, are, that your friends are learning from yeah. you and what you're doing? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd say definitely. Um, there's a moments in the classroom, mm. the presentations, or in these discussion spaces where everyone just bring in little snippets of what they're doing and how it relates, mm. but just as much outside when we're down the pub afterwards and just talking about what we're doing and I think at the very start, quite a few of the other students were like, oh, I literally had no idea that there was things going on in hospitals with arts and health. Um, and just the breadth of that, I think, sharing that and, yeah, I think within these different formats of maybe the workshop or the exhibition, we just, yeah, we'll talk about how that might differ, all our different approaches and how it plays out because we get to kind of hear throughout the whole process of other people's projects, kind of how that unfolds and how they work within their teams. So. Just yeah. really showing on that level um, has been really interesting. Yeah. A good few years ago, we were invited to go to the hospital and do some creative engagement and activities on the wards, and the staff didn't join in the same way that they used to join in in the care homes. I found they were far more resistant to these ideas. Mm -hmm. then. I'm just wondering if that culture is changing now and that the staff are being positive and supportive. Um, question. Yeah, yeah Joe. I can answer you that one. <laughs> I think the staff are super, super busy in their focus of looking after people and as much as they would love to join in with things, they, they don't have that time or that space. Their lunch hour is 20 minutes and that's probably the only time they might sit down in an eight hour shift and come off their feet. Um, there's trying to encourage outdoor space 
but by the time a staff member walks to that space and walks back, their 20 minutes is gone. But then also, they don't want to be far from their team in case they're needed, so very much their commitment is to their patients. Mm. Um, but then there are other wards with uh, a lead on that ward who's really keen on trying to get more arts uh, art activities to help the staff. Um, so if you get a good lead on a ward, then um, and they give permission for staff to get involved, then they they do get involved as much as they can. So, mm. Does that help? Nice question. Do you have anything else to add, or does that cover? I think Joe did a well yeah. job. Yeah, it's really, really interesting. And okay, welcome back, everyone, for part two uh, with uh, Joe, Sinclair, and Amy Creech. We're going to be talking about Joe's experience on placement with us um, from the Creative Arts Therapies course at City of Bristol College. Um, and thanks, Amy, just then for using her amazing projection to get us all back together. That's something I don't possess, and I'm very envious. Teacher voice. Yeah, it was really great. Um, so, again, I'll pass over to you to introduce yourselves. Um, and then we'll ask questions, so yeah, okay. thank you. Thank you. Hello everyone, I'm Amy. So yeah, I run the Creative Arts Therapy Studies course. It's a foundation degree at City of Bristol College. So a foundation degree is like the first two years of a degree programme. Um, and they're, the idea is that they're a bit more vocational, sort of higher education, but with a vocational focus. Um, and they all have a route to a, you know, you can turn it into a full degree, but we only do the first two years. Um, and the course looks at, it's a very broad, multidisciplinary course, so it looks at how being creative is good for your health and well-being in a really broad way. And it's multi-art, so all of the students have to do some uh, using art materials, they have to do movement, they have to do music. They have to do some storytelling, things like that, even if that's not their art form. So it's about kind of broadening your practice. You know, whereas at an MA level, you're kind of refining. Our, our course is about really opening things up and sort of exploring that spectrum of work, uh, whether it's, you know, and, and it looks at creative therapies as well. So it might be kind of diversionary uh, arts activities that are good for your health because they just give you a break from whatever's going on to the idea of kind of psychotherapy using art materials and the hope is by the end of the course the students have sort of found their way through some of those possibilities and they've got a clearer sense of where they're heading next I suppose. Um, the course also works across loads of different contexts so as well as supporting students to go and work in hospital settings a lot of the work is in community or education or primary care all sorts of different contexts really but We'll try and focus a little bit on the sort of hospital work today. Um, and yeah, we, the history of us working in, in hospitals is that we, uh, quite a few years ago, formed a good relationship with Southmead Hospital. And they had a programme called Creative Companions, uh, which was about people going and working one-to-one -one on wards. So taking creative activities and sitting with people one-to-one -one doing something creative. And it was a brilliant opportunity for us. You know, it worked really, really well. Our course is really vocational, as I say, so lots of expectation of going on placement. There's big, chunky placements in first and second year. Um, and then from that, when the arts programme started um, up at I'm not going to get your hospital trust name right, Bristol University of yeah. Bristol and Western. Uh, we did a project that we uh, sort of co-designed with Anna, and um, who was the um, programme director at the time, and the, whatever your job title was, I get all these things wrong, sorry. But, and with um, South Bristol Community Hospital, so we created a programme there uh, for, particularly for um, patients on the stroke pathway. So they were sort of people that were in hospital for quite a long time <coughs> potentially and um, we had a you know talking earlier on about ward leads we had a brilliant ward lead there who uh, was had this thing about there was this piece of research that showed if people walked to the room to have lunch then it made a really big difference to the falls to the risk of falls so they were like okay we need to get people actually going and having lunch together in the, the sort of day room and so we kind of worked on that and created this sort of, you know, creative engagement as a reason to get them to come into that space. 
brilliant project, all these things were really exciting. And then, of course, COVID, lockdown, nobody can go on the wards. That was a sort of really big change. So, yeah, everything kind of rolled back and we were doing lots of kind of, send, you know, creating uh, packs and sending things. And, and then, so Joe's our first sort of post uh, lockdown student back in the hospital. So we're very excited at this point for it all to be kind of happening again and opening up again. Yeah, sorry, I've rambled yeah. on for ages. <laughs> Hand over to you, Joe. I've got far too much to talk about. Hi, yeah, my name's Joe Sinclair and I'm a mature student. So um, the reason I chose to the, this course is um, I have a background in social work. I was a probation officer for quite a few years, came out of that, had a family, um, worked with home ed children, set up my own little business, um, but knew that I, I didn't want to, don't want to go into art therapy or art psychotherapy. So this course was perfect, is perfect for me, because I'm quite familiar with the creative, but um, as in the art, doing art and crafting things, but I'm not so familiar with using movement or words and poetry and music, so I was really interested in how I could bring those things into, um, into possibly work. Um, I think I want to aim to go towards social prescribing is what my uh, aim would be. Mm. Mm. So yeah, so that's how I came to the course and I'm very pleased I have done. And did you get to choose your placement at mm. um, in a hospital environment, Jo? Absolutely. Um, I, cho I, I wanted to do a hospital in environment placement because I felt that would fit in the jigsaw piece that I would be missing really on mm -hmm. from social prescribing out in the community and how that linked mm -hmm. into people coming out of hospital and potentially moving into some sort of creative thing to help them and their well-being so um, that was my driver for the hospital and um, badgering Amy going oh, <laughs> please get me in <laughs> so yeah. Yeah, yeah and um, what did a typical day on placement in the hospital environment with us look like for you mm. um, uh, so yeah, your, your, <laughs> your first challenge, locate where you need to go, <laughs> definitely, and there's AC this and all of those things, so it gives you an idea how it is when someone comes into a hospital as a patient unwell, um, as a visitor worried about your loved one that's in the hospital and you've got to try and locate them and you maybe you've had to try and park and all that stress of just literally getting there. As a staff member, over overworked um, and just really, really doing your best. Um, so that gave me a really good, uh, a good sort of like, wow, wow, sort of, insight into uh, the hospital environment mm. so mm. yeah so a typical day it evolved in the short time that i was there um so they were just coming out of the covid and then i was absolutely amazed at the speed of such a small team moving forward and the absolute passion uh, they have for what they do um, this team is an amazing team. So you come in and it's like, oh, God, look at all that lovely artwork. Oh, that's really interesting. How did they do that in that short time? Ooh. And then getting on to wards. Um, there's a lot of things they try to do and quite often, oh, well, that didn't work and that didn't work. So it's like, right, okay, let's see if this works instead. So there's, they are committed in finding a way to provide a service to three groups of people and you don't often get that when you are in a workspace so of the staff the visitors and your patients so it's quite a huge remit to cover so, yeah and um i wonder joe did you have a sort of a favorite or a most memorable moment from from your time on placement because you did do a lot of work out with patients and with staff um, participatory work across 
mainly as visual art and crafting, but mm. m also some music. Yeah, yeah. So I think um, there would definitely be there'd be my one regret and my one absolute <laughs> brilliant moment, and that was. Um, pianist came in and they came into the atrium area which is a huge great big lobby area played for a little bit lots of people going past quite a lot of clapping and they said right let's move let's move on to a ward so we went on to an older people's ward and there was a family sat next to the piano player and one of them just said, I don't suppose you know the Yellow Submarine by the Beatles, do you? Because their grandfather, father was on the ward. Uh, it was a dementia ward. And he loves that song. So they started playing. And then the staff, to get actually get patients, to get a patient somewhere, getting them out of, physically out of bed and moving them to a space is quite a big ask to do. So they brought that patient and their grandchild um, took that patient's hands and they danced to the music together. And that was such a moment because it hit every generation in that family and it meant that person had actually physically moved as well. The music had probably lifted the souls a little bit but they had a huge, huge moment. And then my one regret is there was a lady that came along, a patient on the ward, started dancing, and I didn't dance with her. And I really now think, oh, that could have been such a moment if I'd have danced with her. So um, I was very British and didn't. <laughs> so, so, yeah. It's amazing you bring that up as well, Joe, because we were talking just the other day that the reason that piano ended up on that ward um, was from a very unexpected request from um, from the ward. Uh, they wanted a piano for um, one of the, the people on the ward to play because when he was at home, he'd play the piano mm -hmm. for two or more hours a day. And when he came into hospital, he didn't have that. Mm -hmm. So um, I think the three of us, actually, we were very swiftly nipped up and found one of our pianos from somewhere else, <laughs> wheeled it in the lift and dropped it off. And it was at Christmas. Yeah, and then we saw him come out and play the first Christmas carol on it. So oh. that piano is quite special. Mm -hmm. And um, one for both of you, okay. um, <laughs> for the, the value of kind of having this work-based learning, being studying and then coming into the work environment and bringing all, all of that together, um, what is that value um, on both sides? Shall I go first? You go first. What I see every year is, so what the, the structure of the programme is, they have kind of six months of in-class learning and then in the second six months of the first year they go out on placement so they're sort of in college one day a week and on placement the other day a week and every year everybody people just come back to me and kind of go oh like all the threads are starting to come together now you know it all kind of falls into place and it's it's so difficult to make those links until you're you've got the chance to be in the actual environment where it's happening and you know as much as we you know we read things and we watch videos and we talk about it and we you know all of the lecturers on the course are all practitioners so we're all kind of talking about what we're doing outside of the course as well but it just doesn't until you actually experience it you can't kind of you can't make those links I don't think you can't kind of, it sort of starts to consolidate that learning and you start to go okay I now understand what all those things were about somehow I don't know mm. if that makes sense mm. to you oh yeah absolutely I think it really cements your learning um, and it also opens more threads yeah. and more yeah, interest yeah. think oh yeah, yeah I true. really enjoyed that side of it so I think I might look down that sort of avenue type of thing so I don't think you could do this course without doing no. the placements no. so no. you really need to feel it, be in it, experience it, most definitely. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. And it's so, you know, it's such an amazing gift. There's so many organisations that take our students on placement. Like, you know, we couldn't do it without. It. And hopefully it's reciprocal, you know, hopefully it's sort of, um, yeah, we, you know, we give something as well as we get something back. But yeah, it's such a huge gift, honestly, to have that opportunity for the students and 
them to kind of and yes we kind of have to like find a way to bridge it and make you know because it is an undergraduate course and some of our students are, haven't you know Joe's come with a wealth of experience but some of our students don't come you know with that they're much younger and they're much newer to this sort of work and so finding kind of the right place for them where they get the right sort of support as well is it can be tricky but it, yeah we get a huge amount of support from our placements it's amazing yeah Great. And I, um, I know um, we've talked a bit about how you can start to prepare for this kind of work, um, arts mm. and health work and creative therapeutic arts, that what training mm. you can undertake and what other experience you need to build <coughs> to do this kind of work. So I wonder if you want to speak a bit about that. It's, I mean, I could talk about that for kind of days, I suppose. I'm very much in the thick of all of that, thinking about reviewing and rewriting the course at the moment. but. What I always come back to is this idea of building a reflective practitioner, you know, particularly on a course like ours, which is so broad and so diverse, students go in so many different directions, we can't possibly prepare them for every eventuality, and so we have to hold this kind of core practice of how do we stop and think about and reflect about our work, and how do we interrogate it, and as long as you keep doing that, whatever you're doing, wherever you go with it, then you'll keep on developing and improving and making the kind of work meaningful and right. So, yeah, that's the bit that I kind of am holding on to at the moment as at the core of something. Um, you know, alongside that, there's all these kind of con core conditions, I suppose, you know, ideas that are kind of going to make the work safe and interesting and, you know, evidence-based and all of those things. But, you know, I think all of the at the, at the end of the day, if you commit to being really reflective in your practice, you will have to find those. I don't know. What do you mm. think? What do you What do you feel at the moment has been most useful in what you've learned, and what do you feel like you I need would definitely, to learn next? Definitely say, yeah, the the journaling, the reflecting on on what you've done. Did that work? Did that not work? What went well? What could I have changed? How did I react to that? What was what did I bring to that? Mm. Um, yeah. That's a huge thing as mm. well. So that's a massive learning learning curve. And um, I think that one of the biggest things in the hospital was I came in thinking, yeah, group, you know, working with groups of people and things like that. When actually, the small wins are the biggest wins. Mm. You know, I've sat mm. with a lady and we chatted about knitting and things like that. And having, just having that half hour with that person who probably all they've had all day is just traffic in and out of their room sort of thing. So that connection, um, mm. learning a lot about connection and also about learning from other colleagues on the course how they operate, mm. how they work, because um, mm. we're all very different, so mm. different learning styles. So it's good mm. that you get to sort of work alongside different people's ways of working. We do a whole module on drama and a whole thing about how you fit with a group. Mm. Um, so we experience everything as if someone comes to a group with you for the first time, that thing of feeling awkward, who shall I talk to? Where shall I sit? So the whole course gives yeah. you that whole experience that the people that are going to come to any of your workshops or any of your work, they're going to have those feelings too. So it just gives you that bit of insight, I think. Yeah, massively. Yeah, it's so important. That's yeah, really great that you've picked that up. That kind of you know, and I think that the multi arts aspect of it really does that as well. You know, so everybody's going to have something that they're like. I'm really no good at this. I don't know where to start with this, you know, and, and actually you need to know what that feels like. Mm. And people really avoid that, especially if you're really accomplished in one creative form, you know, and a lot of people that are facilitating work are really accomplished in their creative form. And you, you can forget what it feels like to be completely terrified of it, you know. So, yeah. What would you say would be the upper age limit to come and do this course because I'm in my suit but oh, we don't have an upper age limit. Absolutely, we welcome. You know, we've had many people who are grandparents, and 
Yes, yeah, it's, it's, it, it's a really broad... Um, that, that's the thing I love about it most, mm-hmm. is that it, um, we have people that have such diverse life experience, you know, people with different creative practices, different work backgrounds, different, a whole different life experiences, and that's what makes it really rich. And it mm-hmm. is all about the group. You know, they learn so much from each, much more from each other than they do from the lecturers, I'm sure, you know. <laughs> it's about that sort of, yeah, it's because it's so, it's all experiential. It's all about, you know, we, we do stuff and then we go, oh, okay, we read something, we do something, and then we go, how do these two things meet and come together, and do they? And so you, it's all about the discussion and the kind of interaction, absolutely. Yeah, and I think it's sort of, that thing you're saying as well about having to sort of look at what do I bring to this is really crucial, you know, and that can get really missed sometimes uh, if we don't actually stop and look at that and you can keep on thinking, why is this not working? You know, so I think that's, yeah. And I've become really conscious. I'm a high energy person and I bring high energy to something. Mm. Um, And that's not always the right energy to bring. Mm. So, uh, you know, I wasn't quite aware of that before, but I am so much more aware of that. And then you become more aware of the space you take and um, matching your mm. energy with where somebody is at and maybe sometimes you need to up it you need to lessen it those sorts of things so the course gives you a huge awareness uh, um, what's the word yeah. it just suddenly makes you so much more aware yeah. of self as yeah. well yeah. So, yeah. Um, do, yeah do you work with cancer patients as well not that I ever have done uh, we've had people work at Penny Bron do placements mm. at Penny You're Bron Penny yeah Bron. yeah yeah, that, I think that's the main kind of. Yeah, I know that there's a really interesting arts, some really interesting arts, um, arts and health groups run by Fresh Arts, working mm. with cancer patients as well at the moment. Yeah, yeah. Any other questions? Yeah. Seems like we've moved <laughs> naturally to questions. You you've spoken quite a lot about how you guys do um, a lot with arts and crafts and stuff. Um, do you guys focus in on people's um, like their disabilities and learning how to interact with people that have different uh, mental capacities? We we do look at it a little bit. Yeah. Like we kind of in the first year we do some initial work, don't we? I'm thinking about how you need to think about working with people and how you need to with whoever you're working with think about you know what's right in this place and with these people to make it appropriate to make it accessible we have a kind of some specific focus on social model disability and how you work with that and we have a great visiting lecturer that comes in every year to do some work on that Um, but because the course is so broad as I say it very much depends on where the students end up going and what their their particular interest is as to what focus we need to sort of particularly look at. We can't, can't possibly train, you know, give people specific training for working with specific, every specific group they might work with. Right. Does that make sense? That sense? So it's sort of, yeah, it's sort of responsive a little yeah. bit to that particular mm. group. It sounds like if you tried to teach everyone absolutely everything, you'd probably get a bit more of a loss. Then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You just can't, you can't, that's why I sort of said about you have to focus on building a reflective practitioner because you know there's some things that we need to think about we need to think about what's it like to work with people with dementia and what do we need to you know be aware of there's certain kind of groups of people that you will you know very likely to need to kind of have at least a starting point of working with but if you go and work with people with dementia all the time you'll have to do loads more thinking about that Mm -hmm. you know yeah and I think it's also the the more academic side of the course as well is you're encouraged to sort of read around something that interests you so to to look into it even more and then that that takes you down another thread another avenue sort of thing so there is there is the written work and the the theory stuff to do behind it all um, which again is is brilliant because someone like myself who hasn't studied for quite a long time it's really interesting to um, to go back and look into all the new thinking or old thinking yeah, still. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's fantastic. <laughs> Thank you. Hi, uh, can I ask the same sort of question about cultural diversity as well? Is there some room in the 
Uh, yeah, it's again, it's the same sort of thing, you know, yeah, we sort of, st we start, what I feel like we try to do is just open up some boxes, yes. go, okay, so, the, in fact, the reading that Joe's got to do for next week is about that very subject, and we have a sort of session thinking about, you know, what does that mean for us as practitioners, and what's our responsibility, and where do we go with that, but, um, we could do a whole course on that, yeah. mm. you know. So all we can do in this sort of in in this sort of foundation level is begin to open up these ideas for people and help them start to think about, yeah, actually, what what does this mean for me as a practitioner? What do I need to kind of really question, unpick, start to think about? So yeah, I don't know what. I think I would say the first project we did that we had to deliver to the rest of the group. Um, I did a Christmas tree sort of theme. Um, it was just a rough, uh, it was a big piece of paper and in the shape of a Christmas tree, just small circles that people stuck down and on those circles, it was about the five ways of well-being. And my feedback from that was, um, why a Christmas tree? That's a very Christian sort of thing. Why not something else? And do you know what? I hadn't even thought about that. So I think, yeah, the course and Amy and they will definitely pick you just up. Just try and question everything. <laughs> yeah. It's not saying anything's right, right or, or wrong. wrong. No, it's just making sure you're always asking awareness, those questions. isn't yeah. it? Yeah, just yeah. becoming more and more yeah. aware and not complacent. Yeah. You know.